Inflammation and Fever Inflammation or Inflammatory Response When we have some kind of tissue injury such as a cut, microbe gets an opportunity to invade and cause infection. Inflammation is the process of defense mounted by innate immunity which aims to control that microbial invasion. In the process of inflammation, the leukocytes are recruited to the site of tissue injury and these accumulated leukocytes destroy the microbes and prevent their further spread in the body. Signs and Symptoms of Inflammation Inflammation is characterized by redness, rubor, localized heat, calor, pain, dolor, swelling, edema, altered function or loss of function, functionless. Now, this is an additional sign and its occurrence depends on the size and extent of damage. Types of Inflammation Based on duration of inflammation, there are two types, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation. Acute inflammation is a short-term inflammation. It starts rapidly and quickly becomes severe. It can develop in minutes or hours. Signs and symptoms are present for few days or in some cases for few weeks. Scratch or cut in a tissue is an example of acute inflammation. In acute inflammation, the immune system is successful in defending the injury. It involves killing of invading microbes, repair and healing of the injured tissue. Chronic inflammation if the infection is not eliminated and the tissue injury is prolonged, acute inflammation can lead to chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation is a long-term inflammation. It lasts for several months or even years. In case of chronic inflammation, the cause of inflammation is not destroyed. The agent causing the inflammation continues to produce tissue damage. Host defense try to destroy or confine the agent so that it cannot spread to surrounding tissues. Innate immunity mostly deals with infections and tissue injury by stimulating acute inflammation. Let's study the various stages in acute inflammation in detail. Stages of acute inflammation Let's say when there is an infection, for example, a cut in the skin. The resident macrophages at that particular site recognizes the invading microbes. And this recognition by these macrophages triggers inflammation. The very first requirement is the recruitment of the leukocytes and plasma proteins such as complement proteins to the site of injury so they can destroy the microbes. Let's see how this happens. The first stage in the process of inflammation is dilation and increased permeability of blood vessels. Now, the damaged cells which include the resident macrophages at the site of tissue injury release pro-inflammatory molecules. Now, what are pro-inflammatory molecules? The molecules which promote inflammation. These include tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-1 and interleukin-6 and some chemokines. So these are the main pro-inflammatory molecules. These pro-inflammatory molecules induce the dilation and increase permeability of the blood vessels. Dilation means increase in diameter of the blood vessels. This increases the blood flow to the damaged area. Dilation is responsible for redness or erythema and heat calor associated with inflammation. Permeability of blood vessels is also increased. 
Now this increased permeability allows the defensive substances and cells such as phagocytes which are present in the blood to pass through the walls of the blood vessels and enter the injured area. This permeability is responsible for swelling or edema of inflammation. Since this permeability results in accumulation of fluids, the pain or dolor can be caused by nerve damage, irritation by toxins or pressure of edema. Next stage is migration of phagocytes. The main leukocytes which are recruited to the site of inflammation are the phagocytes. Neutrophils are followed by migration of monocytes. And we know that monocyte when migrate to tissues, they become macrophages. The resident cells such as macrophages, mast cell, at the site of injury recognize the invading microbes and respond by producing cytokines and chemokines. This blood flow delivers neutrophils and monocyte site of infection. Begin to stick to the inner surface of blood vessels. This process of increased adhesiveness of, of the circulatory leukocytes to endothelial lining of blood vessels is known as margination. Next, these phagocytes begin to squeeze between endothelial cells of the blood vessels to reach the damaged area. This process is known as diapedesis or extravasation. Phagocytosis Once the phagocytes reach the infected area, they engulf and destroy the invading microbes by the process of phagocytosis. Recall that first leukocytes recruited at the site of tissue injury are neutrophils. These are followed by monocytes which mature into macrophages in the tissues. In the next stage, pus and abscess formation takes place. Now we know that in inflammation, blood clot formation at the site of injury, wall of the damaged area. This prevents the further spread of the infection. So, pus is a thick yellowish fluid which contains dead tissue cells, leukocytes, dead phagocytes and pathogens in the walled off area. Sometimes this pus may remain isolated in the body, for example in tissues, organs or other spaces inside the body. Such an isolated site of infection is called an abscess, for example pimple, boils, pustules. And finally, once the inflammation reaction has subsided, healing and tissue repair accelerates. Thus, the major roles of inflammation are First, destruction and removal of harmful agents and microbes from the body. This is made possible by the delivery of phagocytes and antimicrobial substances from the blood to the damaged site. Second role is the prevention of the spread of infection to the other tissues. In inflammation, Local blood clotting occurs which isolates the damaged area. And the final role of inflammation is helping in tissue repairing process. Let us now understand role of fever in innate immune defense. Fever is the body temperature above 37 degrees Celsius or 98.6 degree Fahrenheit. Our body's internal temperature is controlled by a portion of the brain just above the brain stem which is known as hypothalamus. We studied that in inflammation, tumor necrosis factor interleukin-6 and interleukin-1 are produced. These molecules act on the hypothalamus and raise the body temperature. These cytokines are known as endogenous pyrogens. That is, host dried fever causing agents. Fever continues as long as pyrogens are present. 
The exact role of fever is not understood, but some beneficial roles of increased temperature can be related. For example, there is an enhanced effect of interferons, there is an enhanced performance of phagocytes, there is an inhibition of growth of microorganisms. Now, this is because fever causes the liver and spleen to sequester iron and zinc, making them less available to support bacterial growth. Finally, the increased temperature also increases the metabolic rate of tissue cells in general, speeding up the repair process. Thus, in this video lecture, we studied inflammation, which is a local defensive response in case of tissue injury. Inflammation works toward eliminating microbes at the site of injury. Inflammation also prevents the spread to other tissues and also helps in tissue repair. We also studied fever, which is an abnormally high body temperature. This fever inhibits the growth of microbes and speeds up the body reaction that aid repair. Fever occurs during infection and inflammation.